Arise, shine, for thy light is come. Arise, shine, for thy light is come. The glory of the Lord is risen. The glory of the Lord is come. The glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Hallelujah. Thank you for joining me today. This is uh, Pastor Festus and Soha of Oasis Church, Prague, Czech Republic. Welcome to this, today's broadcast. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you again today for this great privilege we have to meet together, Lord God, to share your word together. I pray for your blessing upon this broadcast and upon all watching and upon all who will watch. Let your anointing and blessing rest upon them and me. And may Jesus Christ, your son, be glorified. We bind the accuser of the brethren. We exalt the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Friends, I'm glad to have you again today. And I believe we're going to, this short time we're going to share here together will be a great blessing both to you and to me. And I think it is very important in the times we live in to uh, remind us again as believers that we are actually engaged in a warfare. And sometimes the average believer don't really understand the Christian life. Or we understand some part that is, we think is good and nice and, uh, you know, very comfortable or civilized or uh, sensible to us or that fits well to our present life situations. And then we forget that there are other side of the Christian life that is quite important as the ones we already know about. And the issue of uh, spiritual warfare is very important. Sometimes the average Christian think, oh, that must be with the big preachers or well-known Christians or whatever. But for me as an ordinary average Christian, that ought not to consign me. But that's not truth. When a kingdom or a nation is at war, it affects everything and everybody as in that very nation. Let's begin today from the book of Revelation chapter 12, which I think it would be good for you to take time to read the entire chapter of that book. And chapter 12 of, of the book of Revelation says these words, and said, And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars, representing the tribes of Israel there. And she being with child cried, traveling in pain, in birth, and pain to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads. This was a, a really well-loaded dragon. You get to know exactly who he's talking about as we go down there. And verse 4 says, And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. I mean, this dragon didn't want that child to have one breathing space. And she brought forth a man-child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. In fact, when I read about this, I can remember when the Lord was born in Bethlehem, Judea, the wise men, as we heard about, and the Magi's came from the east, saying, Where is he that is born, king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. The Bible says when Herod the king heard about the king of the Jews, a child that is born, king of the Jews, I mean, the Bible says he was greatly troubled. And he began to inquire of the Magi, who came from the east, where and when the child was born. He said, oh, go find out where the child is born, and I also will come and worship him. You know the story? When he finally was deceived, as we heard, by the Magi, because they didn't come back to tell him exactly. It was in Bethlehem of Judea. It was this, this, and that. It was in the manger. So when he, he, he was so mad that he went ahead and killed every male child from two years and below, all around Bethlehem, Judea, and the environs, Herod the king sent his soldiers, and they killed every male child. So from the very beginning of Adam's fall, Satan had been very, very, very careful. When God told him in the Garden of Eden, 
chapter 3 of Genesis, the Lord said to the serpent, Lucifer, that the seed of the woman will crush your head. You will wound his heel, but he, the seed of the woman, the Christ child, will crush your head. From that very day, Satan took that prophecy very seriously. The devil believes the Bible more than many Christians believe the Bible. He takes God's word seriously and prepares everything he can as a counterattack to the word of God. From that very day, the devil have always stood to contend and to fight every child that opened the womb. You remember the story? Cain and Abel. Cain was the first son. Abel was the second son. And you know the story? I mean, Abel uh, was killed by his own brother, his only brother, Cain. So from this very beginning of Genesis the devil has taken that very seriously to do all he could to stop the seed of the woman, number one, from being born. That is why he created all the chaos of sexual problems from the beginning till today. To counter, to hinder, to stop the coming of the seed of the woman who was to crush his head or to destroy his kingdom. I mean, if you are a king or somebody in mighty power, people do anything to keep their power, to keep their position. So the devil is not, is, is the same way. He, I mean, he will contend, he will fight, he will resist anyone, anything, any person that tries to, you know, oppose or hinder or crush his kingdom. So here we see this great red dragon stood before that woman to basically devour the child as soon as the child was born. Devour, to kill, to destroy, to bring to nothing from very infancy. And some of you might be there today, you have a child that had a problem from the beginning of his life. A child, a boy, a girl, was born with a defect. And you wonder why. Who, some people even think it is God. Or the child even died in birth, or died early, or died premature, or was born with a defect. And you, you begin to wonder, why will God allow such a thing to happen to me? Why will God do this? The devil may even tell you it was God who maimed your child. It was God who maimed the baby. It was God who made the child to be def born deformed. It is never the work of God. The devil is at war against the fruit of the womb from the very beginning. God is the healer. The devil is the destroyer. He came to steal, kill, and destroy. Jesus said, I have come that you might have what? Life and have life what? In abundance. Life as life was meant to be. Hallelujah. And so and in verse, um, in verse uh, 5 again, he said, And she brought forth a man child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. And verse 6 says, And the woman fled into the wilderness, where she had a place prepared of God, that she should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days. Verse 7 says, And there was war in heaven. Say with me, war in heaven. Where? In heaven. This battle, this struggle, this context, this contention, this chaos and confusion and problems did not begin down here on earth below. It began right here in heaven. And he says, And Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels. With his tail, with his power, with his lies and deception, he was able to deceive one third of heaven's angels and cast them down here on earth with him. And with them he formed his uh, formidable army. Okay. And then verse 8 says, And prevailed not, thank God he prevailed not, in your situation, in your struggle, in your war, in Jesus' name, the dragon will never prevail against you as long as you belong to the Almighty God. He prevailed not. He didn't prevail then, he will not prevail today. Because Christ is with you, he is on your side. The devil will not prevail against you. Neither was their place found any more in heaven, and the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent, look at his names, Great, the great dragon, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Where? To this earth. Is this here on earth? Of course, yes. Cast out down here to this earth, and his angels with him. Look at his name, his titles, and his primary tool 
what is in his toolbox, number one, is what? Deceiveth the whole world. He deceives kings, queens, princes, poor, rich, black, white, literate, illiterate, scientists, politicians. He deceived the whole world. It will take a miracle of God for any man or woman on earth to escape the satanic deception, the delusion, the lies, the mixture of lie and truth. The spell cast over nations. Satan cast a spell over nations, cities, kingdoms, homes, families, individuals, academic system. He, he influences politics, governments, authorities, powers under the spell of his deceptive lies. Only the light of the gospel of Jesus Christ can break the spell of darkness and set his people free. When you look at some of the religions of the world today, I would have missed some people from different religions of the world. And I tried to know what is the strategy of your religion against Satan and his lies. And some of them have nothing. Why? Because only Jesus Christ has the truth to set us free from lies of the devil. It, look at all the world religions. What, did they prepare war against Satan? Have they any kind of, how do we deal with the devil? How do we confront Lucifer? How do we? No, not at all. The majority of them, some knowingly, some unknowingly, are nothing but a tool of Satan himself. One of the biggest power of Satan and his lies is in religion. He knew that the humans have that urge and desire and hunger to know or to experience the supernatural. So he created a billion of them. Here is a pen that I have. If, uh, if, if this is the truth, it is the truth, the only truth, the only real truth, the devil will counterfeit this one, paint the color the same, make them all look alike, that you would think, oh, they're all the same. Before I became a child of God, before I got born again, 1985, 1985, September 7th, 9 o'clock in the night, it was Saturday night. Jesus Christ appeared to me in my room. In fact, I was a smoker. I went to buy a packet of cigarettes. Had a packet of marble in my hand. Come into my room. Finish the one I was smoking. Get into my room with the packet in my hand. As I step into my room and hear this glory of God. And I collapsed in the floor. And he began to speak to me. And he said to me, repent from your sins. From this day you are a child of God. That night I was so changed and transformed by the power and the glory of God, that the next morning was Sunday. I was raised up a Catholic. When I was about 13, 14, I said, um, I love this more than going to Catholic church. So I might as well forget about it. When I'm ready for God, I look for him. I just stopped going to church. It didn't, you know, it didn't make, because I, it was, there was no change in my life. I was just you know, going to religious meeting every day and do all those confirmations, whatever. It didn't change. It didn't make it. It didn't change me, you know. But from that very day, the next morning, I was so changed and transformed that my very friends that live in the same street with me, when they saw me the next morning, they were asking me, are you Festus? They said, what happened to you? You look different. You are changed. I said, last night, when you all left, after our talk, whatever, when you all left your homes, Christ appeared to me. I am totally changed. I will, in fact, I, I, nobody, I didn't even have a Bible. I told them, no, I'm not going to smoke again. I won't drink again. I won't fight again. I won't lie again. I won't go to the bars or drink or go to this coin. I, nobody told me that. When the truth comes into your heart, when you experience the power of the Christ salvation, you don't need anybody to bang your head to stop this and stop this and stop that. Don't do this. Don't watch this. Don't. No, 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 no. When, when Christ comes into your heart, when you experience a genuine salvation, you will know deep in your heart what is pure and what is impure? What is holy? What is unholy? The Holy Ghost will witness to your heart what is clean and what is defiled. So when you look at some of these religions of the world, ask them, how do you, who is the devil? What is the enemy? What is your biggest enemy in life? They may tell it is their neighbor. It is that man with that different color. It is my mother. No, 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 no. Our, our common enemy is this rebellious host of darkness, Satan. 
and his fallen angels. And they are here. to he, They deceive the whole world. We thought that if everybody was educated, then we all be civilized and devil is the tale of the past. <laughs> oh, no, 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 my friend. He deceived the whole world. And he was cowed down here on earth and his angels with him. And then verse 10 says, uh, still in chapter 2 of Revelation. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength, and the kingdom of our God, and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. I mean, this guy is like, there's nothing. Whenever he opens his mouth, he doesn't know nothing else to say but to accuse, to castigate, to blaspheme, to speak evil of, to dig at your past, to dig around you, find anything. If nothing he can use ex doesn't exist, he creates new lies and say, that's who you are, that's what you are, that's what you are doing. He, will, he is an accuser of the brethren. A home, a family, a church that does not know how to pray and cast out the accuser of the brethren will never know the power and the salvation and the strength of our God. The moment the accuser was cast out, then came salvation and power and strength. Hallelujah to Jesus. Just like a husband and wife, you can be there at home. You and your husband is fighting every day. You and your son, your daughter, there's always accusation. There's always suspicion. There's always something. If there's nothing, somebody tries to create something, suspicion, doubt. Your wife goes out, comes back five minutes late. You are thinking he must have gone to meet another woman, another man. Your husband comes home and you smell around his shirt to see if he was messed around with another woman. There's always accusations and suspicion. Where do they come from? From Lucifer, from Satan, from this angel of darkness. He is the accuser of the brethren. Let him be cast out of your marriage and peace will come in your home. Hallelujah to Jesus. And the Bible says he accused them before God day and night. He doesn't just accuse us before God. He accuses you among yourselves. He will peddle gossips from here to here, from church to church, from pastor to pastor, from brethren to brethren, from preacher to preacher. If you open your ear to him, he is busy. He never goes to bed day and night. But thank God he was cast out. It is now time for you to cast him out of your life. And the Bible says in verse 11, And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. If you want to have victory over the accuser, over the red dragon, over this serpent, over the devil, over Satan, and over all his works, you must know the power of the blood of the Lamb. There's no other religion. There's no other way. There's no religion and, uh, you know, you do this ritual here, do that ritual here, do this. No, you must know the power of the blood of the Lamb of God. Jesus Christ is the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. Our sins are only cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ alone. Nothing on earth, nothing in heaven, no religion, no doctrine, no dogma, no guru, nothing can cleanse you from your sins. Only the blood of Jesus Christ. We humans, we are bankrupt by sin. Nothing of ourselves, nothing of this world could save us. Everything was defiled. Only the blood of the Lamb of God. And by the word of their testimony, you have to hold on to the word of God. You have to have a genuine testimony of salvation. I used to ask people, are you born again? Are you saved? They say, oh, I'm from this church. I'm from that church. I'm from this religion. I'm from that is not the word of your testimony. Those things, I'm not asking where you go on Sunday, where do you go, whatever, what signs, whatever. You, no, do you have the word of the testimony? The word of God, the Bible is the word of our testimony. You have to have also a personal testimony of your salvation. You have to have that genuine knowledge of conviction. Possibly the day, the date, the time, the place, and how, what happened to you, how you came to become a child of God, how you came to become a believer, how you came to become a Christian. Have you experienced that saving experience of Jesus Christ? Have you ever one day in your life being convicted deeply 
of all your sins. When Christ came to me, the first thing he said to me was, repent of your sins. From today, you are a child of God. When the devil came to tempt the Lord Jesus, the first thing he said to him was, if you are a son of God, command this stone to be made bread. He wanted to see if he had any little doubt of who he really was, of who he really is. If you are a son of God, command that these stones be made bread. If you are a son of God, cast yourself down, for he will give his angel child to pick you up. Oh, that very thing, being a child of God, whenever you doubt your salvation, if you have no word of salvation, if you just, you know, out of, you were religious, your parents took you to the church, and da, 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 that's great. But you have never in your life, personally one day in your life, willingly, knowingly, out of the conviction of the word of God and the Holy Ghost, bowed your knees, gave up your sinful life and said, Lord, from today I surrender to you. And the tangible, genuine change begins. It doesn't mean you became perfect, but you know you've crossed the line. Hallelujah to Jesus. The word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. This is where we are today. There are many of us today in the so-called modern Christian era that have never known what it means to sacrifice for Jesus, what it means to suffer, what it means to endure shame and reproach and persecution. What it means that uh, some of our toys are no more there. We've lost some of our pleasures and fun. No, the average present-day Christian think, oh, Christ died for me. It does not matter how I live. I can watch anything. I can go anywhere. I can do anything. I can behave anyhow. I can drink anything. I can smoke anything. God loves me. I am on my way to heaven. No, no, no. You may not have a problem with God, but you will have a problem with the devil. Because I'm telling you, only when you love not your life, when you are willing to surrender your life to Christ, even if it means you losing your own pleasure, losing your own very life, being criticized, being spoken against, being persecuted, you still hang on to your faith. Hallelujah to Jesus. We are in a warfare. The kingdom of God is at war with the kingdom of, 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 of Satan. This is very, very important. And that battle, that war is raging more and more today. Jesus Christ came. In fact, the Bible said, for this purpose, the Son of God came that he might what? destroy the works of Satan. The Lord Jesus said, if I, by the finger of God, Luke 11, by, if I, by the finger of God, cast out devils, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. If I, by the finger of God, finger of God here means the power of God. It means the Holy Spirit. Only by the finger of God, by the power of his word, by the power of his blood, by the power of the Holy Spirit, the kingdom of the devil is broken and destroyed. Yes, on the cross, Jesus Christ destroyed principalities and powers. He brought to nothing, Satan and his kingdom. But not everybody knows that. When he rose from the day, he rose victorious over all powers, over all forces of darkness. Not everybody knows that. The devil would not want you to know the victory that Christ has won for you and for me. So understand this, that the kingdom of God is at war with the kingdom of darkness. And if you really understand that, it will answer many of your questions. Because we are in a time where many Christians are becoming offended. Many are becoming discouraged. Many are asking why, why, why? Why don't I have all my fun, all my joy? What is God doing? Why am I going through all these things? And they forget that we are a kingdom at war with the kingdom of darkness. Chapter 6 of Ephesians, I'll read that for you. Verse 10 says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Thank God that the power of God's might is ours today and we can be strong. You can choose to be strong or choose not to be strong. But let us choose today to be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord. Not in the world. Not in sin. 
not in darkness. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. He said here, put on the whole, the complete armor of God that you may be able to resist or stand against all the wicked onslaughts of the devil. That means if you and I are not strong in the Lord, if we don't put on the whole, the complete armor of God, it will be very hard for us to withstand or to resist or to hold back or to push back all the onslaughts of darkness. Christ in 1991, September 10, 10 o'clock in the night, appeared to me and said to me, in 1993, you should go to Czechoslovakia, to east of Europe, and there do missionary work. I didn't know anybody. I didn't know where I was in the map. When I came here, which all was a great miracle and testament of God, when I came, he said to me, what you must do, you must do quickly. And the Lord said to me, I have held back darkness for a season. And in a short time, a deeper darkness than that of communism will cover this entire area. What you must do, do quickly. If you want to be saved, it is now. If you want to be strong in the Lord, it is now. You can no more afford to wait. The worst is coming. Darkness is increasing, is deepening all over the world. You and I must wake up now by the power of God and walk in the light of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And it, it says here in verse 12, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual weakness in the high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand in the evil day, and having done all to what? To stand. Stand therefore, having your loins get about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the Preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, where you shall be able to quench all the fiery dust of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. We are in a war. We are at war. The devil is fighting. He has a structure, a strategy, and he has a willing crowd. It will shock you how much of the people on earth are under the spell of darkness. It will shock you. 1 John 5, 19 says, We are of God, and the whole world lies under the power and control and influence of darkness. Should we be afraid? No. Our God is a man of war. Look at Israel, out of Egypt. God was with them. Through the Red Sea, he fought for them. David said, to, Moses said to them, fear not, for the Lord God himself will fight for you. Why should we, should we be afraid? No. Why? Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. We are fighting already a defeated foe. Our king, the commander, our commander-in-chief, the Yahweh Sabaoth, Jehovah Sabaoth, the commander of heaven's army is on our side. If God be for you, who can be against you? If God is in you, who can, raise, who can stand against you? Wake up today, my brother and my sister, and be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. The Bible says they take on the shield of faith. Some Christians just keep their mind and heart naked and open. It is your time and my time to lift up the word of God, to resist the devil's temptation with the word of God. Christ said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. You must learn to fill your heart and mind and your tongue with the word of God. So when the enemy attacks you, you lift up the shield of faith and knock his arrows down and send for the word of God and shoot him down. Today, this is Brother Fessel saying to you, you don't have to be afraid because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Hallelujah. I pray for you today, right where you are, if you're under the cloud of darkness, I command every power of Satan, every cloud of the enemy against you to be broken and destroyed. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. See you again very soon.